This is a very, very difficult evidence pair. So we are going to need as much help as we can get here. It doesn't, it doesn't help us that the passage is very difficult to understand because it's, you know, old timey and historical and it's hard to understand the language, but there's going to be trap choices. The, the ideas that they're asking about are confusing. This is like a perfect storm, but we have some strategies that can help us. So the first thing that I would look at is these line references and try to think about how the chronology rule might help us here. Um, and this is before I even bother with the question. Like I'm always just kind of uh, trying to stay aware of my surroundings and think about what other questions are doing and, and how it's all interacting. And so that's just practice. That's just how I approach the entire reading section. So looking back to question 35, we did have a line reference. It was a vocab question that told us to look at line 53. Now, jumping ahead, right, 36 and 37 are in here, but jumping ahead to 38, we can see there is a little bit of a problem. There is no line reference here, but more importantly, this is the first of the both passages questions, the comparative questions. And so one of the things that's very difficult about the, um, the double passage is it's kind of like two small passages in one. And so the chronology rule can get kind of messy. It's, it's hard because you're, you're shifting from passage to passage, and then you've got these comparative questions at the end that don't seem to follow the chronology rule. And I, I get why that can be frustrating, but if you really come to understand the way the, the way the chronology rule works, you just know that this is expected. So what I see here is kind of like 36 and 37 are kind of where the chronology rule is gonna stop working or uh, or where I would expect it to stop working. And 38, 39, 40, 41, the comparative questions are kind of like their own thing. They might have line references, but they're not really playing by the chronology rule because we're not really going in any order anymore. Now we're jumping between the two passages. But 37 should still follow my expectations about the chronology and the way that the answers are going to appear in these uh, line references, in these passages. So what that says is that if question 35 was about line number 53, then I would expect the answer to 37 to come after that. And if I look at these line references, look, there's a clear place where that would slip in, right? This would be where number 35 would be. And so it would make much more sense then for the chronology rule if the answer to number 37 was either C or D, meaning that A and B are suspect. I can't eliminate them. I still need to, you know, b b treat them as normal answer choices because they might be right. They, the chronology rule sometimes is broken. But if I need to guess something, I would be much more likely to guess C and D here because they follow what my expectations are and what the rest of the test normally follows. So that's my first thought here. The next thing we're going to do, though, is, is start to go through the normal methodical way of handling this question. And especially when we have difficult text, we want to make sure that we are always looking to find matching ideas, right? We might not understand all the specifics of what's being said, but if we can narrow our focus to smaller phrases, we're much more likely to see if there's a connection between what we're being asked for, what the line reference is saying, and then what the choice is saying in return. So it's all going to fit together, and we might not be able to explain it coherently, but the more connections we can find, the better. So the first thing is we need to make sure we know what we're looking for when we go to these line references. So it says, in passage two, Mill most strongly suggests that gender roles are resistant to change because they whatever. So gender resistant to change, gender roles resistant to change. So there's, there's two key ideas here, right? I'm talking about gender roles, but I'm also talking about this idea of resistance to change. So I'd, I'd love to find some combination of those two things in the line references. Let's go to A. Let's start at the beginning, 43 to 44. Very beginning of the passage right here. As society was constituted until the last few generations, inequality was its very basis. Okay, so maybe inequality is gender inequality. So that maybe checks off that box. And why would it be resistant to change? Well, I guess maybe because it's been around for a long time, right? It's, you know, uh, it's a an old thing. I, I don't know. So I don't know if that answers my question, but it seems related. So let's keep that in. Let's go on to line reference B. This one kind of randomly starts in the middle of a sentence. It starts with the word two in 46 and then goes to 49. So that's right here to here. 
Uh, two persons could hardly cooperate in anything or meet in any amicable relation without the laws appointing that one of them should be the superior of the other. So I guess if the two persons are of different genders, then that kind of matches. Um, so maybe the reason it's resistant to change is because of the law? Again, I'm kind of fishing here. I don't really know. It's not great that these aren't jumping out, right? So the law, maybe this is, it's old. I, I'm kind of coming up with reasons, but I don't know yet. That we'll, we'll try to decipher what these really mean when we get to the next step of the process. But for now, just knowing that they might be related is, is good enough. So let's look at C, 58 to 61. So that's going to be right here. In proportion to the strength of a feeling is the tenacity with which it clings to the forms and circumstances with which it has even accidentally become associated. So this is not talking about gender roles at all. However, it does match an idea that, I, that would make me keep this choice. And that's this idea of resistance to change, right? Clinging to some sort of form, uh, clinging to something, is a synonym, basically, for being resistant to change, right? So if you're resistant to change, you're clinging to the old ways, this is kind of like a dead-on synonym. So it doesn't really talk about gender roles, but then again, this entire passage is talking about gender roles, so I guess maybe it is indirectly. So again, I don't have a definitive answer here, but I have something that matches, and it's a little bit tighter of a connection with this idea of resistance to change. I'm not, I'm not trying to fish for that part like I was in the other choices. So I don't know. I'm still kind of lost here. Let's look at D, 67 to 69. That's right here. Uh, employments will fall into the hands of those men or women who are found by experience to be most capable of worthily exercising them. So, okay, it does talk about men and women, so that talks about gender roles, but notice it's not talking about resistance to change because it's suggesting that the, the, um, the, the gender roles have kind of gone away, right? That uh, the people who are most worthy of doing a job will get that job. So this seems like it solves the very problem that we're being asked about. So honestly, this is the only choice that I would get rid of here. Um, I'm not confident in A, B, or C, but D seems to not be talking about a problem. It seems to be talking about the problem being solved. So it's something, right? I mean, you know, what we can go on here is it's not much, but it's a little something. And honestly, if you kept it in, it wouldn't be the end of the world either. We're, we're very much lost at this point in the process. So now we hope that we can get a little something extra from the choices in number 36. So hopefully they, they can clarify some of these line references for us. So gender roles are resistant to change because they have long served as the basis for the formal organization of society. Okay, well, they've long served, seems to match with that idea of it being old. So the, on, only until the last few generations, right? Like this seems to match, right? It's, it's a good fit. So, okay, I'm gonna keep that one in for now. Maybe that matches with line reference A. Let's keep going. B, they are matters of deeply entrenched, entrenched tradition. Well, if something is entrenched, it's resistant to change, it's clinging to something, um, that kind of maybe fits. And here we go, the forms and circumstances, this is an old-timey way of talking about tradition, right? If something is formal, then it's traditional, right? That's the origin of that word. It's, it's slightly differently spelled, but it's the same basic idea of something that is formal, a form, it is a tradition. It's something that we, we kind of follow because we've always followed it. So that also seems to match. So that's line reference C. So okay, keep that around too. Uh, C can be influenced by legislative reforms only indirectly. Well, that legislative reform maybe does match with the idea of a law, but here's there's other problems with this choice. So um, it it's only indirect. I don't even know what that means. Only indirect meaning what? They can't pass the law? It has to be like a secret law? I really don't know what that means. Um, yeah, that idea makes no sense to me. This is just saying that the law makes one the superior. I, I don't know how this relates. So it's confusing me. Not a good sign. D, benefit the groups and institutions currently in power. Um, that's probably true. Right? Why are gender roles resistant to change? Because the people who have the power to change them don't want to, because they're benefiting. But that's not something that's said in the lines. And this is a good example of a, the way the SAT kind of sets some traps for us sometimes, is they use 
um, answer choices or language that we use all the time to talk about political issues, and they put them in choices that, you know, are just not related to the way the, 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 the topic at hand. So this is probably a true thing, but this is not one of the points that Mill is making here. Um, she's not saying that men are, um, are keeping the laws the way they are because it benefits them. Um, that needs to be said. I know that that might seem obvious, but that needs to be said in these lines and we don't have that. So this is not true. So it looks like we kind of also have somehow gotten rid of choice B here, right? We don't really seem to have a match, but we do have this competing set of matches. Uh, they've long served as the basis for the formal organization of society. That does seem to match with line reference A, that only until the last few generations, inequality was at its very basis, okay? And then they are matters of deeply entrenched tradition because in proportion to the strength of a feeling is the tenacity with which the feeling clings to the forms and circumstances with which it has even accidentally become associated. Meaning because we feel like men are supposed to be superior, women aren't, we are less likely to change because it's tradition. Um, so this is a problem, right? This happens a lot where we have an evidence pair and then we have two sets of answer choices that maybe match up. And I'm going to be totally honest with you here. My first and primary reason for getting, for picking my answers here is the chronology rule. Because I'd be confused and I don't really have the time to dissect these choices much further. So my instinct would be to say, you know what, I'm an expert at this test. The rules tend to be followed. I'm going to place a bet on the chronology rule working here, and I'm going to pick the line reference that I'd expect to be correct based on the other questions. And then I'm going to pick the matching one with that, so that would be B. And I'm going to move on. And I'm going to do all the other questions. And then, of course, if I have five minutes left at the end of the section, this is these are the questions I'd come back to. I'd circle them and be like, all right, make sure you come back here and, and spend some more time, because maybe I discover something that I didn't, I'm not seeing right now. I want to be clear, these are the correct answers. And it's not just because of the chronology rule. That's why I would get it right, but there's more to it. So if, if you need a reason to guess and go and, you know, uh, get lock in some answers, then that's your reason. The chronology rule is a perfectly valid reason for making a guess and moving on. But we'd ideally like to know for sure why these answer choices are right. So let's look again at the question. Mill most strongly suggests that gender roles are resistant to change because, okay. Well, line reference A is kind of just telling us what we already know, that the gender roles didn't change in the past, right? As society was constituted into the last few generations, inequality was its very basis. So inequality between men and women was just the, the way things were for a very long time is what those lines are saying. But they're not saying why they were the way they were for that long, right? It's saying that the inequality was around, but it's not, it, it's not explaining why it stayed around so long, why it was resistant to changing. And that's important. That's what the question really wants from us. So line reference A is stating something very, very obvious. And then choice A is kind of just restating it, but neither of this pair does not answer the question. It fails to tell us and explain to us why it's resisted to change this entire time. We need to know why. Now line reference C in its own way is doing that. At least it's doing it better than, than line reference A is. So what is it saying? In proportion to the strength of a feeling is the tenacity with which it clings to the forms and circumstances with which it, was, it has even accidentally become associated. And if we go back a little bit, we can kind of see that the context is still men and women. But of all relations, that between men and women being the nearest and most intimate feelings um, and connected with the greatest number of strong emotions was sure to be the last to throw off the old rule and receive the new. For in proportion to the strength of a feeling is the tenacity with which it clings to the forms and circumstances with which it has even accidentally become associated. So she's saying because the, the inequality between men and women is so kind of strongly felt and um, has so much emotion tied up with it, 
it's been resistant to change because there's so much tradition around the roles of men and women. And so it's a matter of deeply entrenched tradition why it hasn't changed. It may seem like I'm splitting hairs here, I totally get that, but um, this is kind of the difference between something I've said on maybe some other uh, evidence questions, is the difference between a what choice and a why choice. This tells us what we already know, that men and women have, um, uh, the roles of men and, men and women have been resistant to change. This is explaining why it's resistant to change, because there's so much tradition and emotion bound up in this and people don't like that. So it's answering the question and it gives us more information and that's what we're supposed to do here. If you got this wrong, I really wouldn't like cry over it. It's a really, really hard question and a really hard passage. There's a lot to just dissect here. But I think the main takeaway for everyone should be that the chronology rule can absolutely get us points that we might not really have a good sense of otherwise. Here is a good ca case where I, someone who's been doing this for over a decade, would still get this right, not because of knowledge and skill, but because of a, a stupid little SAT strategy that just nudges me in the right direction and improves my odds of guessing right. In hindsight, yeah, I understand it, but at the time, if I were doing this in a test, I would not be 100% confident in my answers. I would just be trusting in the strategy, and that can be enough. You've only got so much time, so you gotta use your time wisely and spread it out and do the best you can uh, with the time you have. It's really tough, but we're talking, you know, the difference between a 750 and an 800 with this kind of question. So it's worth trying to consider as many strategies as possible.